Keep in mind that when you're playing a player embedded in a YouTube page, you're not playing the video, you're not playing, you're not controlling the player. The player controls you because the player answers to Google, answers to YouTube and decides whether you can still play it or not. Uh, the, the code that runs in that player works for YouTube, not for you. The code that runs in Motionbox there works for you 100% of the time. When you're playing a video and when you're starting it and when you're seeking in the video, uh, the player has, it's very important to understand that, the player is working with your best interest in mind at all time. It's accessing the file directly and it's not answering to anyone else but you. When you're running a video there, the player might be doing tons of stuff, sending information to Google, uh, you know, acknowledging whether you can still play it or not, loads of stuff. You have no idea. You have no idea what it does in the background. Uh, and so, actually, I don't have either because I didn't dig much further, but I know that this player does not is not controlled by the user, but by the maker of the player who did a JavaScript player for YouTube. And so it's mostly working for YouTube, which is fine because YouTube, as they present themselves, the video service. So they decide the way you watch their videos. Now, it's your freedom to install a tool like Motionbox that access the videos directly because you should be free to decide what you do with the data that you find on the internet. Uh, that's one of the essential freedom. They're free to have a web page that functions the way they want, but I'm free to display that web page the way I want in the tool I want to use. 